It's a hot one at Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex as two exciting ULS, USL clubs look to earn three points in the desert. Tonight we'll see Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC, sixth in the West standings, versus Phoenix Rising FC coming off a thrilling stoppage time equalizer from global superstar Didier Drogba. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Corey Cohen with you on Play by Play. My partner tonight is Matt Stubbington. For the Switchbacks, they're led by leading scorer Masta Kasher. Uh, Master Kasher is a really talented player. He's adept at shooting with both feet, looks for the spectacular goal, but is also very good dribbling at the defenders and also finding his teammates. You see he has three assists on the season. As for Phoenix, all eyes across the USL have been on the legend Didier Drogba. And Didier is living up to the legend that he is. Four goals on the season. He's only had four or five appearances so far this year and is a tremendous player, brings in the young players, and just the experience that he has is really a real bonus for this Phoenix Rising squad. We'll take a look at the starting 11, starting with the switchbacks. They've got a formidable attack up front, not just with Cashier, but up top at striker, Kevon Freiter. Uh, another talented player, Kevin Freiter. And then you look on the right side with Aaron King. Those players will be looking to spread that Phoenix Rising deep back line out wide so they can get in behind and get those scoring opportunities in front of net. Now taking a look at Phoenix and their starting 11. The only difference from last week is Eric Avila is starting in place of Sean Wright Phillips, a mysterious absence from him, not on the bench either. Uh, it's a surprise that Sean Wright Phillips isn't in the squad tonight, but Eric Avila is a very talented player in his own right. Very good midfield lineup for the Phoenix Rising. And then look up top in partnership with DDA Drogba is Omar Bravo, who is very good and has finally got on the scoring sheet. So it should be an exciting matchup tonight. A lot of great players out on the pitch. Should be competitive. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got the match coming up for you right after this. Phoenix Rising FC, Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. savings and style live comfortably together and right now the selection has never been better just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional only $599 and this urban casual four-piece bedroom just $499 visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street Pruitt's proudly serving the valley for 65 years Phoenix Rising FC has taken aim. With international legends Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo playing side by side, Phoenix Rising is making every match a must-see event. So, watch Phoenix Rising FC Ride Herd on Tulsa Roughnecks FC, Saturday, July 22nd at 5.30 p.m. Live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC. Every shot heard round the world. It's all about the food. You really need to have a passion for what you do and a passion for food. The Big Kahuna. It's 12 ounces of ground beef, topped with some cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, homemade pickle. I mean, it's just a huge meal. I believe in a scratch kitchen because I'm passionate about the food that we serve our guests, and I love seeing people enjoy the food that we create. Welcome back, everyone, to Phoenix Rising FC on Your View, Arizona. Now, last home game, everyone talked about the heat. Now, tonight, it's just a balmy 97 degrees. However, weather is still on everyone's mind as it's monsoon season. Now, because soccer is the way it is, rain is not going to really affect anything. And with the monsoons, rain comes in hard but very short. So that's probably not going to delay the game any. However, one thing that can delay is lightning strikes. Now, Phoenix Rising FC staff is monitoring it. The protocol is if a light Lightning strikes within 10 miles of the stadium. The referee will blow the whistle and stop the match. 
Both teams will come off the field and they'll wait 30 minutes. If lightning strikes again within 10 miles during that 30 minutes, the clock restarts. So that could be a delay we see tonight. However, everything looks clear right now, and hopefully the only lightning strike we see is a Didier Drogba free kick. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Jose. We are back here, ready for this matchup between Phoenix Rising FC and Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. Of course, there is Didier Drogba, the captain, and of course, co-owner of this squad. It was a huge deal when the announcement was made earlier this year that he would come on, he'd be a co-owner, he'd play for two seasons, then transfer into a front office role. And Drogba on the pitch has already made a gigantic difference. He has made a dra dramatic difference to this squad. And as I say, I mean, he's just leading the team. He's showing that he's not just here for painting the windows or anything like that. He's here to actually contribute and he's doing a fantastic job. Colorado Springs led by Steve Trichu, the head coach for the squad since 2015, formerly an assistant with Colorado Rapids. Last two years, this squad has finished third place in the West. They're a little bit behind that this year. We'll see if tonight can be the turning point. There is Josh Cohen starting in net for Phoenix Rising. He's had a successful season, 67% save percentage. He's only given up one goal in the past two weeks. He is a very good goalkeeper. And you see Coach Catron for Phoenix Rising, first year in charge of the Phoenix squad. And we spoke to him in the week, and he said that Josh Cohen is really coming into his own as a goalkeeper and is starting to learn how to communicate better as the young keeper for Phoenix Rising, which is an important part of his game and any goalkeeper's game is how to communicate with the teammates around him. So he's learning just 24 years of age and didn't even play at a high level in college, went to a D2 school. You see San Diego, but led the entire division too in save percentage and goals against. So he's definitely a promising young player. They've got some exciting players out there. Again, no Sean Wright Phillips, no reason given, but they still have Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo up top. Two international stars. Bravo, of course, the all-time leading scorer in Guadalajara history. So he's famous in Mexico, and he's quickly becoming really famous in Arizona. Uh, he has had a really good season, but a frustrating season as well. He's had a lot of chances in and around the penalty box that hasn't consistently found the back of the net. And it's only recently that he actually managed to get the ball into the back of the goal for his first USL goal of the season. So it's good to see him get on the scoring ways because he's had such bad luck and some really good opportunities, just some bad luck in front of goal. Moyes Poiti in goal for the switchbacks. Very young player, 21 years of age. He is a member of the Cameroon national team. This year, his first experience outside of Cameroon joined Colorado Springs, and he's done a nice job. 69% save percentage. 23 goals allowed, 51 saves, and four clean sheets. So just about ready to begin on the pitch here. It is incredibly hot in the desert right now. About 95 degrees from Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex in Tempe. But they will play. We'll see some hydration breaks. But we are off here in the desert between Phoenix Rising and the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. With, excuse me, with Matt Stubbington, I'm Corey Cohen. Sharni Yerk is our, Sharni Yerke is our executive producer. Tom Piero, our director. Phoenix Rising in the red kits, Colorado Springs wearing white with a little bit of blue on them. Phoenix Rising also with the Mad Decent brand on their chest, that is Diplo's brand, who's another co-owner of this squad. Quite a few famous co-owners here, along with Pete Wentz, Brandon McCarthy, of course, Drogba. So here's Cody Wakasa starting at right back position, his usual spot. For Colorado Springs, Sean McFarlane passes forward to Aaron King on the right. Forward now. So we're now a minute in, and grabbing it easily is Josh Cohen. I'll note no relation to myself. <laughs> I was going to ask you, but <laughs> the moment hadn't arised yet. <laughs> a boot forward all the way to the opposite goal line, Poiti is there. 
little bit of hit and hope there from Phoenix Rising. Both teams feeling each other out in this early going. Dangerous slide there from Eddie Prue. It was clean though. Here's Drogba in the midfield. Let's see what Colorado Springs can do. Knocked away. Good job there by Wakasa to get goal side and win the ball back for Phoenix Rising. Playing the ball forwards, Drogba getting the ball to a teammate, and then finally to Bravo. So here's Drogba, takes a shot on goal just wide, but he had the fans here excited for a fleeting moment. Well, the fans think that that went in the back of the net as it rippled the side netting, trying to catch Poite off guard. So see Drogba. Drogba just let it rip. And you see him just looking up. And you have to believe that because that ball bounced where it did, he didn't hit it as cleanly as he wanted to. He saw something he liked as he looked up and saw where the goalkeeper was. Lesson there for the switchbacks back line. Back off at your peril. <laughs> you give too much room to drop, but he will make you pay. A foul there. Looks like it's called on Song Kim, the South Korean national through pass looking for drop but instead they'll find Gavin a lot of power there the fans were excited but we'll see a goal kick coming up here for switchbacks and that's the advantage of having Drogba the attention that he garners opens up the players around him and that's a key thing is how Drogba is fitted into this Phoenix Rising squad is the team has to make sure that they don't just give the ball to Drogba and let him run the show they have to make sure that they play their supporting roles around him in the manner that is required. And an example of that from Gavin, the left-footed shot just over the crossbar. Especially knowing that Drogba, obviously, late in his career, signed up two seasons on the pitch. After that, he'll be in the front office. So he won't be around forever. He's got to really get the other players to advance, and that's what he has done thus far. Since he's joined the team, this is his uh, fifth match with them. Or excuse me, sixth match. He's played five, now six. Nice touch there from Drogba forward to Bravo, who can't get a foot on it. Plotsy was there in time. Well read by the goalkeeper off his line quickly. The spin of the ball just put, took it out of the reach of Bravo. Didn't check up on the surface. Foul called against the switchbacks. Another free kick to Phoenix Rising. That was Kim again. So Taysom Kim, young player, just 23 years of age. Already has one assist on the season, but he's gotten... A few more yellows than he'd like. He's got three. Off the head of Drogba. Ball with Avila. Right back to Eric Avila, the native of San Diego. Graduate of UC Santa Barbara. On the left wing, it's Vis Victor Vasquez. Try to center it. But instead, they'll play it all the way back to Miguel Tim. He's a holding midfielder for this club. Back to Tim, native of South Africa. Picked up a yellow card last week. Shouldn't be a problem, though, moving forward. Blair Gavin. Quick touch from Drogba. Nice defense here from the switchbacks, though, especially in the midfield. They're really not letting Phoenix get much. And there's the old broadcaster's curse across into the box. Nothing doing there, though, as Wakasa didn't have much power behind it. That should be a foul called against Wakasa. Or excuse me, that was Blair Gavin. Studs were up against Kim. Maybe at a different point in the match, Gavin would be getting a yellow card for this. Very reckless challenge on the half sideline there, right in front of the switchback's bench. Steve Trichu unhappy with that, the head coach of Colorado Springs. I'm not surprised. I would be unhappy <laughs> about that, too. I don't think Kim was very happy, either. Seventh minute of action here. Free kick taken by Josh Phillips in his third season with Colorado Springs. Nice boot there from Amadou Dia. 
Reckless touch from Sean McFarlane. Here comes Omar Bravo on the left flank. Got some time. Defended by Jordan Burt. Off his line is Poiti. Only has to come out a little bit, actually, to make the grab. Bravo there, a couple of step over moves, trying to get some space for himself in the box. The touch in the end went away from him. Perhaps a little bit more patience from Bravo. He had players arriving. Gavin was trying to be available on the overlap. A shot taken wide of the net. Cohen knew it. We'll take another replay at how Bravo did up here, in the attacking third. You see how he squares up the defender there. Great job from Bravo, but didn't get in a good position defensively, got onto his heels. And credit to Jordan Burt there, the right back from Indiana, went to Butler, and he's been with the team since their inaugural season in 2015. Very good defender, but he can also get up and attack. He has four goals on the season, just behind Cashier as the team leader. So Kim fighting for it, but it's won by Matt Watson, the Englishman. Cohen with a boot well past midfield. So the rain has stayed off. It looks like we'll avoid it. Knock on wood, of course. It's just the heat, which will be tough. The heat and the humidity. 94 degrees right now here at Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex. Feels closer to 96 or 97 with the humidity. Colorado Springs, they switch fields. Right now, Josh Suggs has some room. He's used to this desert weather. He's from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Great job there defensively. Wakasa, the right fullback for Phoenix Rising, tracking the run. Getting into the passing lane and winning the ball back for the rising. Dangerous slide tackle there. That's a foul. I wouldn't be surprised to see a yellow, though. The referee, Daniel Radford, doesn't look like he's reaching for a card. I'll just have a word with the player quietly. So physical match thus far here in the ninth minute. About to enter the tenth. Wakasa forward. It's given up. Drogba upset with himself. Had he kept his run going, the mistake there from Sean McFarland could have been a goal. Didn't quite read the dummy from Bravo. Cohen reads that one well. So ball in the midfield here for Phoenix. Forward was Drogba onside? No, he was not. Such a dangerous player, and it seems like Sean McFarland, his primary job is to track Drogba and McFarlane, he's a good player, but he's just 24 years old. <laughs> uh, he's gone up against a lot of experience in Didier Drogba. And McFarlane, he's got some ups. He's listed as six foot tall on the roster. Looks a little shorter on the pitch, but <laughs> he's impressed me with his physicality thus far in the game. A couple of missed touches, but certainly seems a pretty good athlete, and I think he'll be able to match Drogba step for step. He's another player who can get up the field. Two goals and an assist on the season for him. Throw in into the box. Phoenix swarms. Back to Suggs. Across in. This is dangerous. Cohen is there. Contact is made, but he holds on. So the first real challenge of the match for Josh Cohen, and he steps up. That was a fantastic job from Cohen to get in on that cross and make a clean grab at it. Fantastic movement from the switchbacks to run across the face of the goalkeeper to make that difficult. Played all the way back here. There's McFarlane. Up in the air, Blair Gavin comes down with it. Plays back. Here's Tim. Ramage now on the right side to Cody Wakasa, a Southern California native. Another young player, just 23 years of age. Forward offside, though, no doubt about that, the assistant referee. <laughs> As you see, 
the supporters there, the Red Fury and the Banditos, the two supporters groups, they were cheering because that went in. The referee saying, hey, I blew the whistle. Didn't you hear it, Mr. Bravo? <laughs> Certainly Bravo showing that he has the ability to put the ball in the back of the net. It's a shame, actually, if he'd have just let that ball go behind him. Drogba was lurking and on and on, in an onside position when the ball was played. A big hit. Here's a strike on goal. Colorado Springs takes an early lead off a goal from Kevon Freider. What a strike from Freider, the 22-year-old from Kingston, Jamaica on a year-long loan has given his squad a 1-0 lead, and they're having fun in this celebration. Uh, he's got the moves to spring himself free up the pitch. He's got the dance moves to celebrate the goal. It all seemed very innocuous off of the free kick following the offside call against Bravo. Ball played forwards. Collected by Freider, and he calmly put it in the back of the net with his right foot. Well, you're absolutely right, Matt. You didn't really see this one coming. Just a boot off the set piece. He challenges on the clearance off of the set piece. Ab Am Amadou Dia went up for the head ball, didn't win it. Freyda did, collected his own header, and then with no other touches, just put his right foot through the back of the ball, and the ball passed Cohen into the back of the net. And silence is this crowd in Phoenix. So certainly these fans, the Banditos, the Red Fury, they did not expect that, especially with the star power that they've got here at Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex. But again, in the pregame, you and I mentioned with Cashier and Freighter and King, there is so much talent up top for Colorado Springs. They can break free at any moment. Nice through ball from Drogba. Ball on the left flank, broken up. Nice work there from the switchbacks. A good defensive play there. I think it was King on that far sideline coming back defensively from his right midfield position, right attacking position to thwart that attack from Vasquez. So the goal officially credited in the 12th minute. Drogba is just covered the second he gets the ball in the box there. Good job from Gavin from the Phoenix Rising. Didn't give up on the play. Slows things down and sees the throw in, but it's right in up in the attacking third for the Phoenix Rising team. So it gives them time to get this, their team set up defensively. So here's Dia, young player, born and raised in Paris, moved to the U.S. when he was seven. Lived primarily in Colorado, went to Clemson, and now here he is. Ball now with Matt Watson. Poor pass looking for Drogba, though Watson, to his credit, chases it down and will keep possession for Phoenix. Amadou Dier debuted for Phoenix Rising the same night that Didier Drogba did and had the assist on Drogba's first goal for the club. Drogba flicks it into the air, the header won by Sean McFarlane. And now back to Poati. 16th minute of action here, a 1-0 lead for the switchbacks. Fans here making noise in the heat. Again, about 95 degrees in the desert. Fight for positioning. It's won by Colorado Springs. And a bit of a dive there, no whistle blown. It's two on two, Drogba and Bravo. Drogba does not pass to Bravo. Was that a mistake? Well, he didn't really have the angle to pass. Got to give credit to McFarlane for reading the play from Drogba as Drogba was trying to go back to the weak side of the pitch. Bravo tried to create an angle to support Drogba, but there wasn't really anywhere for him to go either. It was a very difficult opportunity to create. They were too parallel on the pitch. Now in the back line. Pass from Dia. 
It's Vasquez and now Matt Watson. Or excuse me, Miguel Tim. Quick flick there from Didier Drogba. But it's been tough for Phoenix Rising to really get through this switchback's defense in the past 10 minutes or so. Well, back four pretty organized back there. Phillips and McFarlane in the center area of the pitch, playing in concert together. Good partnership so far this game. So the assistant referee lets Daniel Radford, the head referee, make the call. He says, switchbacks throwing. Kim, tough play, tough touch on the ball, gives it away. Bravo is dispossessed by Roni Argetta. Get at the defensive mid for this squad. Also the captain. Header one by Dia. Cashier. Now on the right flank, 18th minute of action. A shot on goal on the ground, wide of the net. Cohen lets it go. We'll see a corner kick. So I'm not sure if that touched Cohen or if it was deflected on the way. I think it was deflected on the first initial shot. I don't think Cohen realized that it had been deflected, otherwise he might have stopped, tried to stop the ball from going out for yeah, the corner for sure. kick. And correction, excuse us, it's Sion McFarlane, not Sean. Kingston, Jamaica. Cohen makes the grab there off the corner kick. He had to make the grab. Phillips was running in at the back post. If any mistake was made by Cohen, it would have been a 2 nothing lead. So here comes Matt Watson. He was onside. Plays it to Bravo. Now Drogba about 20 yards out. Somehow gets through, falls down. The fans want a whistle, but that seemed to just be a clean fall. Well, you can't call a foul against the soccer ball, and I think that's what <laughs> Drogba tripped over. Absolutely. And he's frustrated, clearly, but yeah, it does seem like he just the soccer ball wasn't going as fast as he was, sprinting through about three defenders. Just seemed to get stuck under his foot, and as he goes through, you can just see he was anticipating the contact from Phillips, and it didn't come. And Drogba went to the ground, and I think the referee made a spot-on decision in not making one a call on that occasion. I completely agree with you. So 20th minute here. Colorado Springs on top, 1-0 off a 12th minute goal from Kevon Freider, assisted by Josh Phillips. Phillips with his second assist of the year. Here's Cody Wakasa. He leads his team in assists with three. Now Matt Watson moving forward. Across in, and McFarlane was there. Tim. Bravo lets it go because he thought he was in an offside position. Ball goes through to the goalkeeper, Poiti. Watching the Phoenix Rising, they play a, div a, a diamond in the midfield area, and I think that the, they're getting a little bit spread out. They don't really, for me, have a, a good presence in the middle of the midfield part of the park. Foul called that time. Looks like that's on Blair Gavin. But for sure, Gavin and Tim are more defensive midfielders. And Watson has been a little bit quiet from the right side. Avila has been incredibly quiet in that center attacking mid roll. Normally taken by Sean Wright Phillips again, who's mysteriously not available tonight to play. Set piece taken by Cashier, lobs it into the box, it's headed away. Peter Ramage there to head that one clear. And Lacasa cleans up the second ball coming in. Still, the switchbacks have the ball on the attack. Another header from Phoenix. And here's Drogba. A lot of contact, through ball. Too much for Omar Bravo.
So certainly thus far, it seems like Phoenix Rising is missing in a big way Sean Wright Phillips, who has really been the key to setting things up and helping out Drogba and Bravo. This could be a big mistake. Switchbacks in the box. What a save from Josh Cohen. Shot taken by Eddie Prue out of Bozeman, Montana, graduate of Marshall. Left-footed shot. Looked like it may have been going wide of the left hand upright as we look at the goal, but Cohen, he did, couldn't make any mistakes there. Got his body well behind the ball, made the save nonetheless. Looked like Prue had a player inside that he could have passed the ball to. I think Freda was there centrally. Just take a look at the possession. Phoenix has dominated in the category, but ultimately switchbacks on top with the goal. So the question is, how much does possession really matter if you can't find the back of the net? It matters not. <laughs> and not only have they not found the back of the net, they haven't even gotten many shots off on goal. It's not like they've dominated and they've just been unlucky at the end. They haven't had too many good attacking chances. They've just really been controlling in the defensive midfield. So perhaps an injury here. As we'll take a look on the ground. I believe is Blair Gavin. Frustration there from Bravo. He was initially fouled. The referee allowed to play to continue thinking there was some advantage. It didn't come to fruition. So the foul was called. You see as Bravo goes up for the second ball and in comes Kim into the back. I think he might have gotten nicked in the back of the ankle. Doesn't feel good when you get the, the studs from the, your opposition yeah. number down the back of your ankle. Yeah, you're not expecting it, just buckles. It's a rough feeling. Through pass down on the left flank. Can't chase it down. So Victor Vasquez moving forward. Twenty-fifth minute of action. No whistle there in the midfield. See as Phoenix rising, passing the ball, and we talked about the possession statistic. A lot of their possession has been in that back line area. But because they don't have that presence in the middle of the park, their diamond is spread out. They're not able to refine that release. They have to go around the outside, which ordinarily I like, but also have to have that player in the middle to spring the offense going forwards as well. You look for Drogba, Avila, Bravo to check back to feet, so then the ball can then be played into that middle area and then out wide. Speaking of out wide, across, a lot of power. Poitiers is there. And certainly Avila, again, a good player. He spent last year with Tampa, Bay, with Tampa Bay Rowdies, the year before that with Orlando City SC. And he's got a lot of uh, MLS appearances in his name. But he's still not Sean Wright Phillips, of course, a legend in England in the Premier League between Man City and Chelsea and QPR and the national team. And the experience that he brings to connect either with Drogba or Bravo or on the wings, he's not out there. And they're clearly missing him. Well, the way Avila received that pass there is, is what I'm looking for from him and from the, his partners up top as well. You can see he was trying to play the ball out wide onto this near sideline, trying to get Watson into the attack. So 27th minute here from the desert out in Tempe with Matt Stubbington. I'm Corey Cohen, Sharni Yerke, our producer. Tom Piero, our director. We welcome all of you, whether you're watching online or on television in Arizona or in Colorado Springs. Ball in the box momentarily, chasing it down now 
is Wakasa. The cross header won by McFarlane. Wakasa will let it go. We'll see a throw in. Good service into the box. McFarlane, good clearing header. Vila has, has had a good career. He's spent a lot of time in the MLS, FC Dallas, Toronto FC. Played with uh, Shivas USA as well. So we'll see if he can up his game a little bit, start threading the needle some more, connecting the dots that Phoenix has on this squad. Here's Colorado Springs. That's a foul and likely a yellow card, as that could have been a breakaway. And there is a yellow for Miguel Tim, or excuse me, for Matt Watson. As Kevon Freider was set to have a break that could have been, and that is Tim, excuse me, that could have been a goal. A yeah, good foul there from Tim. He knew he was beaten. Tried to indicate to the referee that he thought the player had died. A dove on the on the foul, but obviously it didn't. Another great opportunity on the set piece for the switchbacks. They choose to go short with it. Boot there from McFarlane. A little too much power there. Looking for Prue. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Drogba flicks it to the left flank, looking for Blair Gavin. Here's Vasquez streaking to his left. Gavin takes it center, cross into the box. Little too high for Drogba, caught by Poitzi. Just a little bit lower, Drogba gets a clean head on that. Uh, all started with a beautiful headed pass from Bravo, finds Drogba. Drogba plays it out wide to the foot of Gavin, and then the service in was tremendous. As you say, just a little bit out of Drogba's reach as he enters into the six-yard box. So here's Watson. Plays it back to Tim. Tim has now picked up yellow cards in consecutive matches, both last week and then here in the 28th. Drogba, about 18 yards out now. Corner of the box, cleanly dispossessed. Good double team there defensively. Burt and McFarlane combining to take the ball off the foot of Drogba. Forward pass. Here's Josh Suggs. The cross behind him in the box. Shot from Cashier is just wide. But Colorado Springs has looked excellent in the first now 30 plus minutes of this match. Very dangerous on the counter attack is Colorado Springs. Switchbacks FC. We'll take a look at the replay. Last time, Phoenix up there, a little too high for Drogba. Quati was there. Was good service in there from Gavin, just a little bit too high. And look at the skill there from Cache. Has an eye for goal, no back lift on the shot. Just couldn't get the ball on frame. But Cohen, the goalkeeper for Phoenix Rising, didn't know that. He dove to make sure that it was going wide of his left hand upright. So we're here to hydration break. If you haven't too, if you haven't watched too many matches, particularly in the southern part of the United States, and in this case out in the desert, hydration breaks in both halves when the heat index is too high. In this case, it's about 95, 96 in Tempe. So a hydration break. Take just a little bit of time between these two squads. At every Phoenix Rising home match during the 2017 season, two lucky fans will be upgraded to sit in the best seats in the house, courtesy of Pruitt's Fine Furniture. These lucky winners will not only enjoy tonight's action in the most comfortable seats directly on the pitch, 
but those luxury reclining chairs will also be delivered to their home next week as a gift from Phoenix Rising FC and Pruitt's Fine Furniture. They look like they're enjoying themselves. How do you like to enjoy a match in those chairs? Nice and comfortable. Almost looked like he was on the phone being told that he was on TV. <laughs> Maybe a little bit cooler for leather would be ideal, but he'll take those chairs anytime. Well, I'm sure they'll be nice and cool in an air-conditioned living oh, yes. room once they get back home. So again, we thank you for watching us with Matt Stubbington. I'm Corey Cohen. Whether you're watching on television in a couple of Arizona markets or in Colorado Springs or you're watching online, thank you so much for joining us. Currently, Colorado Springs switchbacks up 1-0 over Phoenix Rising FC. The fans out here, the Red Fury and the Banditos, they are looking for a goal. Last week, it took... Quite a while, but it was Drogba who came up towards the end. You see right here the importance of Drogba coaching up the young players around him, telling them what he wants from them, what he expects from them. And that's certainly been, he's been a big part of the transformation on the pitch, but then also off, again, just adding that that cachet, that swagger of having Didier Drogba and speaking earlier this week to head coach Patrice Carteron, he was saying that some teams, they, they're now respecting Phoenix Rising more since they've gotten Didier Drogba, of course for on the pitch, but also off the pitch, they're able to draw a player like that. And it's really done a lot. You talk about him and of course the other co-owners, the celebrities, Brandon McCarthy, pitcher for the Dodgers, who's a, a big soccer fan along with Diplo and Matt Deeson and and Pete Wentz, and you put all that together, and they make a pretty attractive option for potential MLS expansion, which is what they're aiming for. It certainly does, and it, it, it's a, just a great opportunity f for Drogba, for Phoenix Rising, and for the players that are on the squad to learn from such a talented individual who has so much to give. Drogba spent uh, the last couple years with the Montreal Impact in MLS, after, of course, the illustrious career that he had in Chelsea, the cross is deflected and Poitiers is there. Amazed that didn't go out for a corner kick as it deflected off the foot of Burt, but Poitiers was able to corral it before it did so. But you look across the USL, Corey, I mean, it, the experienced players and the international players that are in the league is such a great opportunity for the youngsters to learn from. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, Drogba, I mean, a lot of people know his background, but the all-time foreign leader in Chelsea history, fourth all-time in history of all players for goals in one of the most storied uh, clubs in the entire world. The man single-handedly won the Champions League in 2012 in the final against FC Bayern Munich. He's a national hero for the Ivory Coast, led uh, the Ivory Coast to their first ever World Cup. He's been to three, and uh, now the first player owner in football history. It's really incredible. Oh, stopped a civil war, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> not, and, not many and people that can say that. And some people at home, by the way, might think that you're joking, that he just may being facetious. No, he literally was a huge hand in stopping the civil war out in the Ivory Coast. So just a, a huge player and what he's done for his country as he loses the ball there for Chelsea in the, in the Premier League and just everything he's done, one of the biggest global superstars alive, or at least active, I should say. Given away by Poati. Here comes Bravo, slide tackle from McFarlane. The fans want a card, a foul, they won't get it. That looked clean from Sion McFarlane. That was a clean tackle from McFarlane. He turns and looks at his goalkeeper, Poite, and says, settle down. I can't spare your blushes too <laughs> many times against a player of the talent of Bravo. Fantastic tackle from McFarlane. And what was the goalkeeper thinking? The distribution was awful. Yeah, just gave it right back to one of the most storied players in Mexican soccer history. Poitiers, again, a young player, just 21 years of age. 
plays for the Cameroon national team. Well, it looked like he was upset with his defenders about something and let that emotion just ruin his concentration momentarily. And he, the clearance that he tried to put forwards up the pitch completely miss hit straight to the foot of Bravo. He's very fortunate that McFarlane was there and able to stop the attack. We'll take a look at that in slow-mo, see how clean it was. See on McFarlane. Actually looked a little less clean this time, but. <laughs> I think it was clean. It was, uh, you can see Bravo though, you always tell the players that you, have, you change one thing or the other, you speed or your direction. If you can do both, then you'll be more successful as well. And you see Bravo, they, they just slowed the play down a little bit, trying to suck McFarlane in and then beat him with a change of pace. But McFarlane was too cagey for that and knew what was going on. Goes to ground and wins the ball. So a foul called there as Freighter is on the ground. Certainly not something you want to see if you're a fan of the switchbacks. Now with five goals tied for the team lead with Master Cashier. Now looks like nothing but his pride was hurt. Wakasa giving him a knee in the backside for his trouble. But he's up and moving, which will be good. You hear the frustration, though, from the Phoenix Rising fans. They feel that they should have had a couple of calls go their way. Hasn't been so up in their attacking third, but here comes the switchbacks with a great opportunity off another set piece. So here from the left flank, will it be Suggs? No, it'll be Cashier, and Cohen is there. Should be another corner kick for Colorado Springs. A cheeky free kick there from Cashier. Nobody's quite sure what the call is as McFarlane thinks it's a corner kick to the switchbacks. No, it'll be a goal kick. So last touch, it looks like off of McFarlane. And we'll see a goal kick coming up here for Cohen. That was a nice free kick though from Cashier. It looked like he was trying to beat Cohen to the near post. Cohen positioned, anticipating the cross, serving it up. And you see just bending it around the wall into that near post area. I'm surprised that that wasn't given as a corner kick. Cohen did very well to knock that one out. So Phoenix in a hole here. They haven't gotten three points since June 10th when they beat Vancouver. Besides that, it's either been losses or draws. And last week, obviously, the huge excitement. They were trailing 1-0 against Orange County. And in stoppage time, about the 94th minute, Didier Drogba scores a goal to get them a point, earn the draw. But this is still a Phoenix Rising FC team that is looking for three points. They haven't gotten it in quite a while. Since Drogba's debut, in fact. Well, the good thing is that they're not losing games. The bad thing is, is that when you're only picking up a point one at a time, it's a long way back into the playoff picture. Yeah, they have now drawn four matches in a row. And especially here at home, they don't want to just walk away with one point. They won all three. Pass from Tim on the outside to Vasquez. Sent forward, too much power though. So that almost reached the Banditos. They're having a good time. Mr. Drogba is not happy with that cross ball from Gavin, indicating he wanted the ball played deeper into the attacking third down the left flank. For Poiti and the switchbacks last week, they came back. It wasn't quite as thrilling as the one goal in the 94th minute, but they were trailing 0-2 against Vancouver Whitecaps 2, and then they came back, scored two goals in a row, and they were able to earn a point. So both teams coming off of losses they felt pretty good about, or excuse me, draws they felt pretty good about. Looking to get a better result here, however. And for Phoenix Rising, they have not beaten Colorado Springs in the history of this franchise, even before it was Phoenix Rising when it was Arizona United. <laughs> They were not able to beat the switchbacks. They played them five times, four in USL play, and then once 
in the U.S. Open Cup. And the Switchbacks have won all five of those previous meetings. Can they make it six? Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. Keep looking at Drogba and his body language is very negative at the moment towards his teammates. I think he's very frustrated with the movement of his team around him. The passes that are being made are not what he sees should be made. I'm sure he'll be making his point heard in the locker room at halftime to try and fix that. It was useful as a coach to have a player on the pitch that sees things as well and that you can trust to coach up the team. Very difficult sometimes as a coach to get the message across from the sideline. Yeah, certainly when all the players are out there, it helps to have some experienced players like Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo as well towards the ends of their careers. Rolls out of bounds, we'll see a throw in for the switchbacks and there's another play where Phoenix has just been stifled. Made an unforced error. So 43rd minute of action here. We'll have a little bit of stoppage time considering the hydration breaks. Blair Gavin, through pass, seeking Vasquez. Too much power behind it, though, and Colorado Springs moving quickly here, trying to counter on the throw in. Bird on the right flank, forward. Right back. Brilliant slide tackle there from Eric Avila. Here's Drogba, but again, just swarmed the second he touched the ball. Another player for Phoenix Rising that's missing from action tonight is Jordan Stewart, who normally plays in the center back role alongside Peter Ramage. I think they're effect feeling his absence as well because they've had to move Amadou Dia from his left back position that he started at on his debut into the middle area of the pitch and they're missing his attacking presence up the flank. Also, Alessandro Rigi, who's a very talented young player. He is, uh, he's on the bench. He's questionable with a knee injury. So he's available to play. Not sure if he will. He's just an absolute engine. He makes the team tick. He works so hard up and down the pitch. Cortez also questionable with a knee injury. Phoenix Rising, one game against OKC Energy, I think it was. They lost Rooney, who was their leading goal scorer at that time, and Rigi, both to knee injuries. Ball now on the right side of the flank. About to approach 45 minutes on the clock. We'll see a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth official has indicated there will be a minimum of three minutes of added time in the first half. So here we see Watson. Forward for Drogba. He's handcuffed. Pass to Wakasa. Not a very good shot. Rolls on the ground. Poiti is there. Great hold-up play. Started with a lovely switching of the point of attack from left to right for Phoenix Rising. Ball played into Drogba. Great strength holding the ball up under the attention of Phillips. And Wakasa just not able to put enough purchase on the ball to trouble Poiti in goal for the switchbacks. Moise Poiti hasn't been challenged a ton tonight, but when he has, he's done a nice job. He got his body nicely behind that. It's a difficult save to make when the ball's coming directly at your feet like that, but the goalkeeper did well to get down, make no mistakes. Through ball, Phoenix with the cross. Again, no real opportunity there. Something looked like it could be in the mix, but no shot on goal, no real chance to equalize. 
Well, the width is coming for Phoenix Rising. They're able to get out wide around the back line of the switchback team on occasion. So some positives there for Phoenix Rising as they'll be heading to the locker room, probably down a goal. However, they have to find a way to finish the passing in the attacking third. And we saw there that the final pass was not incisive enough and too close to the goalkeeper, Poate. So here come the switchbacks. Cashier. Now it's sent back to Josh Suggs. Again from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Went to Humboldt State Division II but has really transformed into a quality player. He was second team all USL last year in his first year with the switchbacks. So about another minute or so to play here in the half. You see the throw in right into the teammates back. You don't see that happen too often. Foul that time. Looked like it was a little bit of a dive. But uh, Freighter on the ground here, holding his shin. Maybe not quite that high. So Bravo sort of resents that there was too much of an injury. Perhaps Freighter just wants to get back into the dressing rooms. And Bravo's asking, what's the problem? I didn't touch you. <laughs> As we'll take a look at the replay here. Well, he did get him a little bit, but not sure. If I think Friday was uh, trying to sell that one to the official. I think he, he rode the challenge well. There certainly would have been a foul there if contact had been made. I think Freda made a little bit more of it than <laughs> uh, should, have been, it up. should have been made. But unfortunately, that is uh, part of the course for the modern game. Set piece taken into the box. Now Cashier on the left flank. Prue finds Cashier, deflected by Drogba out of bounds. And that is it for the first half. 1 0 is the score. Colorado Springs on top. And again, certainly a little surprising heading into the match, especially the first few minutes. Phoenix Rising looked good. Then Colorado Springs got the goal in the 12th minute from Kevon Freider, and since then, they've actually looked like the better team. Oh, certainly on the counterattack they are. Phoenix Rising have done a good job of controlling the ball, but they haven't had the decisive pass in the attacking third. Now we'll send it down to the pitch for an interview with Coach Patrice Carteron. We're here with Head Coach. We're here with Head Coach Patrice Carteron and coaching the first half of the team, dominated possession, but just couldn't quite figure out uh, figure it out in the final third. What needs to be done in the second half? Uh, to play with more intensity at the moment, I'm falling asleep. Uh, we, I want us to play faster than this. Uh, we are doing passes for nothing. Uh, we are wasting our time. All, uh, every time they have a long ball, every time we, uh, we are on fire in defense. So I'm really not happy about this first half. Offensively, very poor, not uh, intensity in us. Defensively, not intensity in us. So definitively, uh, we have to play with more conviction if we want to do a better second half. And do you anticipate any subs coming out of the half? Yeah, I um, do anticipate. Uh, I would change uh, too many players at the moment, but I'm not allowed to do uh, as many changes as I would like to do uh, about the first half. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Thanks. Coach, not mincing his words as we head into the half. Back to you guys. Just a delightful interview there from head coach Patrice Carderon saying, I'd like to sub out maybe four or five, six players. I'm not allowed to. So we'll see what happens after halftime. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got highlights and stats coming up for you right after this. Switchbacks on top, 1-0 in Phoenix. Okay, one large popcorn. A couple of drinks. That's 1575. I got this. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you doing? Oh, mind tricks. That's cute, buddy. But you still have to pay. With Arizona Federal Credit Union, I can pay with my Apple Watch. I don't need cash or card. Arizona Federal provides mobile solutions when you need them most. You will upgrade your popcorn for a dollar more. I will upgrade my popcorn for a dollar more. Really? No. Arizona Federal. Now that's the power of us. The Heineken family passed down a special gift. An original recipe with only three ingredients and all of them natural. I also have a special gift. The ability 
ability to cry on demand. It's beautiful. Only three natural ingredients. There's more behind the star. Our story tonight, Wonka is back. This time, the eccentric tycoon has hidden golden tickets that could get you a $100,000 instant prize or an entry for a chance to win a trip to Las Vegas for the chance to win up to $1 billion. I'm being told now that to find the golden ticket, you must do the following. Go to your local retailer and play the Wonka Golden Ticket Scratchers game from the Arizona Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Try your luck before they're gone. Phoenix Rising Football Club ha mostrado puntería. Con los legendarios Didier Drogba y Omar Bravo compartiendo la cancha, los partidos de Phoenix Rising son eventos que no se pueden perder. Ve a Phoenix Rising Football Club contra Tulsa Roughnecks Football Club, sábado 22 de julio a las 5.30 p.m. en vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Cada tiro se escucha alrededor del mundo. Halftime here at Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex. Colorado Springs switchbacks on top 1-0 with a 12th minute goal from Kevon Freider here in Tempe. Well, with summer upon us, it's the season of superhero movies and every superhero has a great origin story. This week we profile forward Didier Drogba as he talks about his soccer origins and the moments he most remembers. Hi, I'm Didier Drogba. I'm from Côte d'Ivoire, Abidjan, West Africa. My, uh, I mean, my earliest soccer's memory are uh, when I signed my, when I had my first license as a player, I was 11. And uh, I remember playing as a right back and uh, I scored a lot of goals, so from that moment my uncle told me you have to play forward as a striker because in the family we only play strikers. My favorite youth soccer, soccer memory is uh, uh, again when I was uh, playing as a right back who played a tournament and, uh, and I scored the winning goal uh, on a volley and uh, I think that was my last game as a, as a, as a right back. That tournament, I think it was, uh, it was, uh, I think one of the, the, the best goals of the tournament. A volley in top corner, and then we won 2 1. And uh, we celebrated like it was the final of the World Cup, you know, for us. Hi, my name is Didier Drogba, and I play for Phoenix Rising FC. We built the USL into the largest Division II professional soccer league in the world. And now the time has come to announce USL Division III, America's professional third division league, completing the U.S. pro soccer landscape. It's time for your town, your team, your game. D3 will fuel local pride and local passion, creating a new legacy for the beautiful game and inspiring its tribal following across the country. This is professional soccer, built on a disciplined financial model and operational excellence. Featuring exciting venues to thrill fans, in hungry new markets yearning for the game. USL Division Three, professional, passionate, proven. Pro soccer starts here, coming in 2019. For more information, visit USLD3.com. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. The opening half of the 2017 USL regular season has seen two teams emerge at the top of the Western Conference, with Real Monarchs SLC and San Antonio FC engaged in a duel for conference supremacy. 
and potentially the USL regular season championship. San Antonio broke out first, putting together a 14-game undefeated streak, which included a 672-minute shutout streak to start the season. But the Monarchs' USL record nine-game winning streak, led by Sebastian Velasquez, has moved Real's new-look squad into the top spot as a showdown at Toyota Field on July 22nd closes in. The top of the Eastern Conference has also seen a clearly defined top two, including Louisville City FC, a finalist in the Eastern Conference final the past two seasons, pushing for another high finish in the standings. City's hard-driving attacking group, led by Brian Ownby, Niall McCabe, and Cameron Lancaster, has thrilled packed houses at Slugger Field so far this season. But leading the pack is the Charleston Battery whose 25th anniversary season features an attack that more than lives up to the club's cannon-bearing crest. Led by Romario Williams, the battery lead the USL in goals, with the likes of Forrest Lasso, Justin Portillo, and Atula Guerra providing a strong supporting cast at MUSC Health Stadium. Williams' success has placed him in a duel with Reno 1868 FC's Dane Kelly in the race for the USL Golden Boot. The two Jamaicans producing some highlight reel finishes on their way to double-digit goals before the end of the first half of the season. Kelly's run of scoring in six straight games helped expansion side 1868 FC up the Western Conference standings. Currently well positioned to take its place in the USL Cup playoffs, Reno follows in the footsteps. The likes of FC Cincinnati in 2016, Louisville City FC in 2015, and Sacramento Republic FC in 2014 in finding immediate success on and off the field. Poised to join that group in 2018 is Nashville SC, which has already built an impressive front office and hired former MLS Cup winner Gary Smith as the first head coach in the club's USL history. With more expansion news expected in coming weeks, the conclusion of the 2017 season not only provides more on-field highlights to thrill fans, but also set the course for the USL into the next decade as it continues to raise the bar across the board. Back here at halftime in the desert, Phoenix Rising FC trailing the Colorado Springs switchbacks. One to nothing. We'll take a look at the highlights from the first half right here. And certainly right at the beginning, it was Phoenix that looked like the better squad. Well, they were getting onto the attack. Didier Drogba noticing that the back line of the switchbacks had dropped off and he takes his opportunity for the shot. But it just goes just wide and there's Gavin with his left footed effort off of the layoff from Drogba and that one goes over the crossbar. And then in the 12th minute here's Phillips setting up Kivan Freider. Up high was Freider to win the ball off of the free kick. Does a fantastic job of collecting the ball on the second attempt and then his right foot through the back of the ball puts it past Cohen into the back of the net for the one nothing lead. A fantastic finish from Freider. And from then on, it certainly seemed as if Colorado Springs got the momentum and took it there. You see the celebration from the Jamaicans, McFarland joining Freighter and having a good time. And then after that, it seemed to be the switchbacks that were on top. Well, switchbacks certainly had the better opportunities on the counterattacks. Cohen having to make a save at his down to his right. Somehow, some way, though, Phoenix Rising just couldn't find a way to make that incisive pass in their attacking third. It was a physical game. There was lots of contact. A couple of yellow cards presented by the official in the first half. But somehow, some way, Phoenix Rising have to find a way back into this game, and they tried to do that off of the foot of Gavin, trying to find Drogba in the net. The cross was just a little bit too high. And then another free kick, set piece, played in at the near post from Catcher. Had uh, Cohen struggling and scrambling to his front post. And then towards the end of the first half, Wakasa, a weak left-footed shot after the layoff from Drogba, brought the save from Quate. Take a look at the stats. Possession is still being dominated by Phoenix, but when it comes to shots, that's really what matters when you talk about the goals. And clearly, Colorado Springs has been the better side. They certainly have, and I always look at the possession statistic, and it would be great if it would be possible to break down where that possession happened. And 68% possession, possession for Phoenix Rising is probably happening in their defensive half. 
they have to find a way of getting that up the pitch. I made mention in the first half of trying to find those players, Avila, Drogba, and Bravo, checking back to feed a little bit more and then springing things out wide. So we'll take another quick break, come back with some uh, look around the USL right after this. I'm all about the fish, all about the rice. I think I'm inspired mostly by the discipline behind sushi, the hand-eye coordination, the knife skills. The knife makes a difference based on the steel and the person who made it, and more importantly, the person who uses it and takes care of it. I think there's a certain amount of elegance and simplicity, and I think sushi is, in its core, simple. At Pruitt's, savings and style live comfortably together. And right now, the selection has never been better. Just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional, only $599. And this urban casual four-piece bedroom, just $499. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection. Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for 65 years. Phoenix Rising FC has taken aim. With international legends Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo playing side by side, Phoenix Rising is making every match a must-see event. So, get your tickets now and help Phoenix Rising shut down San Antonio FC, Saturday, July 29th. Phoenix Rising FC, every shot heard round the world. Got some rain out here in the desert. Sort of an odd time of year. You've got some dust storms. You got some monsoons. You've got some incredible levels of heat. But right now we're mixing both the heat and the rain here at Phoenix Rising FC Soccer Complex. Take a look at the USL News and Notes Player of the Week, Jorge Herrera, who has just been on an absolute tear for Charlotte. And a fantastic player, the, the evergreen Herrera, as I call him. Five goals in two matches, as you can see, and he had a goal and an assist today. Played tremendously well against New York Red Bulls, too. And uh, a real find for Mike Jeffries as he moved him from the midfield up to the front line for the independents. And you take a look at the bottom, the U.S. Open Cup. FC Cincinnati, a team that has just been solid, you know, decent team in the US, uh, USL play. But in the U.S. Open Cup, they've had quite a run. And as you can see, they're hoping to make some history in the Open Cup for a USL squad. Well, the game is supposed to have been played on Wednesday, but it got rained out against Miami. That's been rescheduled for August 2nd. But a couple of MLS scalps for Cincinnati in their run in the U.S. Open Cup. So why not see if they can make it into the semifinals? For sure, a lot of teams looking for an MLS spot. You see the upcoming schedule next week. Phoenix Rising will take on Tulsa in that contest. That'll be Saturday at 8.30. So again, with Matt Stubbington, I'm Corey Cohen, Sharni Yerke, our executive producer, Tom Piero, our director. And, and you mentioned, Matt, with uh, MLS expansion, Phoenix Rising certainly a prime candidate for that. It's a huge market, obviously, a big Latin market, which is always big with soccer. And, of course, with Didier Drogba and the other famous co-owners, Diplo and Brandon McCarthy and Pete Wentz and, and everything they've got going on here, the, the new stadium, the new name, everything, they are certainly hoping to be selected. But you mentioned FC Cincinnati is looking to that spot. Even Nashville Soccer Club, or Music City, they're, they're looking to make a splash after hosting a big national team match. So a couple season, a, a couple teams, excuse me, uh, which are trying to really make an impression upon MLS. Colorado Springs, they're pretty much set 
on just sticking it out in the USL and uh, trying to dominate its level. Again, past couple years, they finished third in the West, and they're hoping to get back up there this season. They're currently in sixth place in the standings. Well, two good teams, and get ready for the second half. And a great interview Jose had with Coach Cateron going into the locker room at halftime, and change has been made. Johnson's coming in in place of Gavin on the left flank, so we'll see how he slots into the attack. What a fantastic interview, no holds barred from the uh, the head coach for Phoenix Rising and probably some uh, hair dryer treatment for the players in the locker room at halftime. So Gavin exits the Phoenix native who was drafted 10th overall in the 2010 MLS Super Draft. Now replaced by Jason Johnson, an attacking player out of Happy News, Jamaica, perhaps the best name for any city on the planet. <laughs> And we are underway here in the second half of action. Phoenix Rising FC wearing the red kits. Now heading from the right side of your screen to the left. Colorado Springs wearing the white kits. Now heading from the left to the right. Again with Matt Stubbington. I'm Corey Cohen with you for this broadcast. From the desert. It's hot. It's wet. And we're playing. A shot taken, Cohen is there, and that was actually very similar to what we saw Drogba do in the first couple minutes of the first half. Very well saved there by Cohen. It looked pretty easy. Shot coming in from distance. Looked a little bit innocuous. I think it was Prue that took the shot. The goalkeeper had to make sure he got his body behind that, and he did so very nicely. So here comes Phoenix, Drogba, a nice flick ahead. A spill in the box, no whistle called as Matt Watson went down. There was a little bit of contact, not much. Just looked like he lost his footing as he tried to swing the right foot through the back of the ball. Yeah, just lost his footing. In fact, there was no contact. I'll amend my statement from Josh Phillips. Well, like Phillips thought about grabbing, but <laughs> you thought better of it as he realized where he was and what the situation was. So perhaps the first clear sign of rain down on the pitch since it started around halftime. Still about 95 degrees in Tempe. there from drug as he appreciates the cross coming in he tried to dummy it trying to get Matt Watson in on the far sideline but all skipped off of the damp surface and out of bounds for a goal kick that Quarte will take With Jason Johnson coming into the match it gives a little bit of a different dimension to all the Phoenix rising in the second half he's a very fleet of foot he'll stretch that back line that has been very good so far in this match for the switchbacks. So now in the midfield, Miguel Tim through pass. Looking for the new player. Johnson showing that speed. Plays it back. Was that a handball? No call. And so the switchbacks escape there, at least for a moment. Here's Drogba. And they'll slow things down here in the attacking third. What do you think, Matt? Could that have been a call for a handball? Well, it could have been. It was certainly uh, more ball to hand than hand to ball, though. But certainly, I've seen them given. Exactly there was what I was talking about from Johnson. He gives that extra dimension up top for Phoenix Rising. Ball over the top. He was able to find his space into the box. Ball played back. Just out of shot on the replay is the handball. But the deflection did take the ball away from Drogba, who was coming in late, trailing the play. You see Johnson was trying to find his senior teammate there. Looking for Drogba, he did have a teammate further to the left. Now, I'm not sure if he didn't see him because he was so far to the left and Johnson was already at the goal line or if he just wanted to find Drogba. But either way, that might have been a better call if he could have made it. 
but tough to say. He was in sort of an awkward angle. Here's Drogba offside on the left wing. So a promising run until the whistle blows here in the 50th minute. Drogba saying he wants the ball quicker. It goes back to the comments of the coach to play with a little bit more intensity and conviction. Yeah, th those were some incredibly straightforward words from Coach Carteron, and you have to appreciate when he's honest saying the way we were playing puts you to sleep. Well, nothing was lost in translation, <laughs> that's for sure. Carteron, native of France, took over mid-season, so he hasn't been with the team that long. But uh, they haven't lost a match since he has been the head coach, and he doesn't want to start tonight. You mentioned four straight draws. Of course, they want more than one point, but they certainly don't want to have their first loss of his tenure and Drogba's tenure here in Arizona. So ball now with Jordan Burt taken away. A give and go, a slide tackle. Will a penalty kick be called? No. And it looked like there was contact, but not directly related. And we've got some booze coming from the Banditos. And Coach Carter Road is very upset. We'll take a closer look at that. Slide tackle, missed him, and then it looked like just the contact with McFarland that got him. Well, the initial contact happened outside the box, and the drag of the shirt, I think it was from Burt, the right fullback, for the switchbacks, and that really should have been called. I agree. Very good job from Phillips to pull out of the slide tackle, and then McFarland just did a great job getting goal side to shepherd the ball out of bounds for the goal kick. I like what Coach Carteron has done, though. He's moved Bravo back into a more central role in the midfield area to play in conjunction with Avila and put Johnson up top alongside Drogba, again giving that extra dimension of speed that was lacking in the first half, and that allows Phoenix Rising to stretch the back line for the switchbacks, and we're already seeing that they're getting into the attacking third with more effectiveness. We mentioned in the first half, no Sean Wright Phillips tonight for Phoenix. No reason given, but he's not available. He's not in the starting 11, not available on the bench. And of course, the veteran of Manchester City and Chelsea and QPR and the England national team would certainly add some experience to the pitch. Header in the air from Drogba, out of play. And we'll see the goal kick. Johnson was running in late. I don't know that he would have been in time to get on the end of the cross. But again, a good service, this one from Avila. And you see Johnson coming in at the far post. And I think there was no shout from Johnson to pull Drogba off of the ball, but I Johnson might have been there in time. So here come the switchbacks. Named, of course, for Pike's Peak. How you come down. Here's Burt, takes a shot. What a sensational save from Josh Cohen. A leap into the air to make the grab and prevent this match from getting away from Phoenix Rising. Fantastic shot with the right foot from the switchbacks. A little bit innocuous, and there was Burt with the right-footed shot. Lovely step there from Cohen. Strong gets himself set nicely, moves to his right, and strongly parries that one out for the corner kick. And now the rain is really coming down. So much power behind that shot from Jordan Burt. Again, he's a right back, but He's entered tonight with four goals on the squad, four goals and only eight shots on goal. So he's an effective player. When he decides to take a strike, there's a decent chance it's gonna go in. That time though, Josh Cohen was prepared. Well, it's just good movement from the goalkeeper. And then it's so key is you have to time things right as a goalkeeper. You need to be moving your feet so you're in the position to make the save. But at the same time, you also have to know when to set your feet to get a good step 
to spring off, and so you have the maximum power in your drive, in your dive, sorry. And by the way, in this rain, it's tough to really get a good footing when you go to set. So the heat mixing with the rain out here in the desert. Ramage wasn't quite able to keep that ball in out for a throw into the switchbacks. So Cohen doing a nice job tonight. Did give up the one goal. Came to this squad after spending last season with Orange County. Had 13 matches with them. He's got 13 matches this season, this being his 14th. He's been in top form recently. Switchback still with the ball. Here's Freighter. Can't get anything to go, so some solid defense from Phoenix Rising. Freighter upset, it's a goal kick. And so he should be. That looked like it came off of Wakasa there for the corner. And Freighter beat Wakasa three or four times on that whole sequence of play. And ends up coming away with nothing. Another fruitless pass forwards on looking for the long ball. It was those balls that Coach Cutteron was very upset with at the end of the first half. No industry in the balls played forwards by Phoenix Rising. Look at that chest control from Ramage, though. That was absolutely brilliant to stop that ball on a dime. Now on the right flank. Somehow Phoenix still going, interrupted. The cross broken up by Sion McFarland. Here's Drogba now. Header, ball in the air. Bravo looking to get a piece. And Poiti, a little unsure where the ball was going to bounce, but makes the grab nonetheless. 56th minute. Great work from Watson on the right flank. Keep things alive. But unfortunately for him, all of his support overran where he would be playing the ball to. Consequently, that attack, as dangerous as it looked, all petered out in an innocuous fashion. Johnson is there, tries to get a touch to Drogba, who is taken out by Taesong Kim, and we might see a card for that one. No, maybe not. Daniel Radford, the referee here. He'll give the free kick the set piece. Not a yellow card to Kim coming from behind. Uh, you can see as Kim was going in on the slide, lost control of himself a little bit on the wet surface. But credit to Kim, he pulled out with his fr uh, right leg, sorry, which would have really been a hard challenge against Drogba. So I think it's why he didn't get the yellow, was because he made the attempt to s limit the physical contact <laughs> as he slipped into the veteran from Phoenix Rising. Kim, the young Korean national, already with three yellows on the season. Doesn't want to accumulate too many. Here's Moise Poiti calling out, moving his defense. McFarlane and Phillips certainly have done a nice job tonight. So this is around where Drogba scored the 94th minute goal a week ago to get his team the equalizer. Skies it this time. Into the stands, actually. And uh, lucky fan, I don't think she's going to be able to keep it. Well, it's not baseball. The ball's got to come back, please. <laughs> <laughs> no lucky souvenir for her, just a nice memory and uh, an appearance on television and many computers. Not his Sunday best there from DDA Drogba. Yeah, certainly not what he was able to accomplish in the 94th minute against Orange County. So 59th minute of action here. Still a 1-0 advantage for Colorado Springs. Nice through pass there. Now on the left flank from Vasquez across into the box. Behind a couple players, Watson has it. Chips it ahead. Punched out by Poiti. Phoenix still cooking though. Avila sends it into the box. McFarlane is there. Offside is called. And so the switchbacks will take over. It 
Certainly this early part of the second half, Phoenix Rising have taken their words of their head coach too hard. They're playing with a lot more intensity and a lot more purpose in their attacking half. Nice spin move there from Freighter. Sends it to the right flank for Aaron King, who settles it very well, but a foul called against King. And we'll see if there was a real injury there, but certainly a foul. Take another look at that. <laughs> Definitely a foul there. <laughs> Just grabs him by the stomach once Vasquez was able to get possession. So here's Amadou Dia. First round pick in the 2015 MLS Super Draft for Sporting KC. He's got 32 appearances in the MLS. Plays here on the back line for Phoenix Rising. Another opportunity missed there for Phoenix in the attacking third. Well, doing the right things, getting the ball out wide, opening up the switchbacks back line, creating opportunities. It's just that last pass. They're getting a little bit anxious and not making that incisive movement of the ball to spring somebody free in the penalty area. Huge boot there from Poiti. Drogba plays it back. And switches fields onto the left side of the pitch. Avila, he's got Vasquez to his left. The cross, too much power. No, he'll find a teammate, but the header is off target. From Cody Wakasa. So substitution here, Shane Malcolm, another Jamaican-born player entering the match. Entering the match is number 23, Shane Malcolm. King has been pretty quiet this game, haven't really called his name a whole lot. Yeah, for someone with three goals and two assists, definitely a bit of a quiet night. So King exits and Malcolm will enter. Now he was born in Jamaica, moved to Florida when he was nine. And by his grandmother, he's actually a member of the Guam national team from her heritage. So he represents quite a few countries on the map. He's got two goals and two assists on the season. Vasquez sends it to the left. Avila. Now Tim. Back to Vasquez. And he is just ambushed, taken away by Malcolm, who's got plenty of speed and plenty of room. There seems to be nobody in the back line. Tim sprints back. Dia is there. And Cohen makes the grab after a uh, Sort of a mixture between a cross and a shot from Shane Malcolm. Well, the back line were tracking back, but they were worried about the runners in the box, which gave Malcolm all kinds of room on the right flank. And Prue was begging for the ball at the top of the box. Nice head of steam. You can see there isn't a red shirt around him and takes his time, looks up. And in the end, there was nobody there. To get on the end of the cross, Freiter was running across the face of goal in front of Cohen to the near post, but the cross went to the back post. A little too much power that time for Malcolm, who just entered the game. Was Drogba on? He was. Crosses this in just past. Phoenix still working here. Another cross, this time looking for Drogba, but McFarlane is there and clears it away for the moment. So here's Avila, could have been a dive. Avila takes a shot just high as I think some fans were looking at Burt who took a spill. We'll take a look at the first cross from Drogba looking for Johnson. 
And Johnson just took a swing and missed the ball completely. And Vila, a nice turn on Burt. Burt goes to ground and eyes went to the player as he hit the turf. And the shot from Avila just went up and over the crossbar. Not troubling Poite in goal for the switchbacks. And I should say it looked like Butler actually was got, got a hand on in his face from Avila on that play. So it wasn't out of nowhere. Looks like he did get some contact in the face when he went down. So here's Malcolm on the right wing. Vasquez is there, played central. Freighter, he's got time. Prue. Cashier back to Prue, and right back to Masta Cashier. Also been a little bit quiet. Canadian international, he's 21 years old for Montreal. Come up through the Montreal Impact Youth System, played for FC Montreal, so he might have a thing or two in common with Didier Drogba, who spent the past couple of years with Montreal Impact. I love the way when Cachet re receives the ball, watch how he squares up his defender. He's always looking to dribble the ball 1v1. Bandito's making some noise, along with the Red Fury. That ball loose for a moment. Will that count from Jason Johnson? It looks like it'll stand. The equalizer in the 66th minute from Jason Johnson, the substitute from Happy News Jamaica. And the Banditos have some happy news here in the desert. Tied at one apiece after some contact with Moise Poiti, who I believe is still on the ground and was calling for a card. Well, the Banditos pool. are thrilled. Crowd's going crazy, and it's just a fantastic run into the box from Johnson across the face of the goalkeeper. Vasquez plays it in. It deflects off of Bravo. It looks like the goalkeeper had it, but then coughed it up. You see Johnson there looking to see whether it's going to get called back. So, yeah, he never really makes a clean grab of the ball. Now, it is tricky. A lot of times a ref will concede all rights to the goalkeeper when the ball's in the vicinity, but... Poiti did not have full possession of it. He is still on the ground. So they're trying to make sure. And, and it certainly was uh, dirty, not in a bad way, but it was a messy play. It was a messy play, and I think the goalkeeper may have received contact after Johnson was going by with a trail lane, trailing leg. But certainly, goalkeeper never had clear possession of the ball. You can see it's bouncing off of his chest there. And maybe the goalkeeper was trying to sell that there was some contact in the and a foul. And he might have gotten some contact with his teammate on the back line. But it, it certainly does look like Jason Johnson did not have any you know, really aggressive contact there with, uh, with Poiti. He just, he was aggressive, he kept going, and it paid off for him. Well, he forced the error from the goalkeeper, and the ball bounced his way, and Johnson put it back in the net. And Johnson certainly has been a difference maker in the games that I've seen him come in off of the subs bench, and he proves to be that again. It's a fantastic effort from the young man to get across the face of the goalkeeper and tuck that ball in the back of the net. And you can see as he was running away, he was waiting, wondering whether it was going to be allowed or not. But the referee allowed play to continue. And as you said, Corey, you, you see those things given against the attacking players on occasion. So we might see a, uh, a substitution here, depending on how Moise Poiti is doing. You certainly hope that he's all right. The medical staff is out there. And they're checking out the head, perhaps making sure there was no head injury, no concussion. Of course, you want to take that very seriously. Again, a, a messy play with Johnson just sprinting forward. But uh, you, you can't say it was dirty. It was aggressive, but you cannot say it was dirty. No, it was a, a, just a good 50-50 play, and Johnson came up trumps and put the ball in the back of the net. And you've got to feel for uh, Poirier Prate because he hasn't really put a foot wrong all night. He just wasn't able to collect that ball cleanly. For, uh, 
Colorado Spirit. We'll take another look at it here. See Plotti going for it. He seems fine there. So I, I believe it might have been contact from, and he'll stay in the match. Might have been contact from his teammate on the back line who then took a, a slide. And you can see from that replay, actually, from that angle, Johnson realizes that he's not actually going to get to the ball in the initial run of play and pulls out of the initial challenge. And then the goalkeeper coughs it up. And from that angle, it looks like it, it bounced onto the knee of Johnson and then into the back of the net. Pretty amazing turn of events. So we are all tied up here in Tempe, Arizona between Phoenix Rising FC and the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Now in the 70th minute after a couple minutes of the uh, medical examiners looking after Moise Poiti, making sure he's all right. So the question is, can Phoenix capture the momentum? Poor touch that time from Victor Vasquez, who set up the previous play with the cross into the box, got the touch off Bravo, and then really Jason Johnson finishing it off. That's certainly a foul. Jason Johnson just didn't have position there against Argetta, the captain for the switchbacks. He was trying to get a piggyback ride from Argetta <laughs> for Johnson. Free kick taken by Sion McFarlane. That seems to be an embellishment. So the run of play will continue. A big boot forward looking for really a couple players have the option, Drogba or Johnson. Drogba with some fancy footwork in the box, taken down by Burt. Is that a penalty kick? No, it'll be a corner kick as the last touch is off of Burt. Referee's done really well with those decisions this evening. Again, a good tackle in the box. Drogba trying to win the penalty. That back line of Phillips and McFarlane have done a really good job of winning the ball pretty cleanly in the box. So Avila just the short pass. Now he'll cross it in. A lot of power. Shot right at Poiti who makes a spectacular catch to keep this at one apiece. As Drogba, I believe, on the header puts it ball on target. A lovely service off of the short corner. The goalkeeper well positioned and made no mistake in his handling on that occasion. So now in the 72nd minute, kept in by Freider. Phoenix swims around him. Cashier intercepted. Burt. So now here in the 73rd minute, we've still only seen the... Uh, the one substitution, Jason Johnson, who came into the match. Are you surprised, especially after what Coach Carterone said at halftime, how frustrated he was with his team that there's only been one sub? Well, I think that they, the players that are out there got the message at halftime and have played a much better game in this second half, and consequently, Coach Carterone hasn't needed to go to his bench. They certainly have played better here in the second half. I was actually surprised that he didn't go with more than one sub at halftime entering the second, but since then, they have looked alive. Now, there are a couple players that Coach Carterone is missing. He, Chris Cortez out with a knee injury along with Luke Rooney. And, uh, of course, we mentioned Sean Wright Phillips, the uh, legend, is not available tonight. And then there's Alessandro Rigi, who is questionable. He's on the bench. He could play, but might not want to risk it. So. You factor all of that in, and you actually have a pretty small bench, all things considered. Nice interception, and he is still going. Vasquez now loses it. But a poor touch will keep this in Phoenix. And they're attacking third. Here's Drogba. Tries to split two defenders. Almost pulls it off. Johnson now. Look at that speed. Battling with Burt. Bird comes away with it. Nice victory on that challenge from the man from the Hoosier State. 
You can see Johnson there, a little hesitation, trying to wrong foot the defenders. He got past one, but wasn't able to get past Bird, who stood his ground beautifully to win the ball for the switchbacks. It's Amadou Dia. One touch, Vasquez. Johnson wanted the give and go. Didn't get it from Vasquez. Here's Omar Bravo again. More in a midfield position this half, trying to facilitate. Out of bounds. So a tough touch that time from Cody Wakasa. Just didn't quite have the control to keep it in. It's good to see Wakasa trying to get up into the attacking third. We've seen it a few times in this second half, but you, if you're gonna put the hard work in to get up and down the pitch, you have gotta make sure that you concentrate and get your touch right. So a throw in a lot of steps taken there. Throw in coming up here in the 75th minute. Dia. Vasquez, nice pass, finding Avila. Defenders there. Tim Bravo challenged, now all the way back to Remage. Remage went through the Newcastle youth system back in England. Had 51 appearances with Newcastle, then 68 with QPR, 57 with Crystal Palace. So we'll take a quick break here. We'll stay with you, but on the field, they'll take a quick break. Hydration break. The rain has certainly slowed down, but uh, the heat hasn't really cooled off too much. 92 degrees here in Tempe. It just feels a little bit steamy out there now for the players. Of the heat, the moisture from the rain, it probably feels like a, a sauna out there. So like Ramage has got a cut on his forehead, which will be attended to during the break. The brilliant goal in the 12th minute from Kevon Freider. Just a spectacular strike, which put Colorado Springs up early. And just another example of want to and desire in the attacking third. This one from the switchbacks as Freda with his dance moves beats Dia to the ball and then puts it in the back of the net. And then this is the other example of want to and desire. The deflected ball into the penalty area. Johnson across the face of the goalkeeper causes the mistake by Poite. And the ball deflects off of Johnson's knee into the back of the net. It has been the two Jamaicans tonight who have come up huge for their clubs. Kevon Freider, native of Kingston, Jamaica. He's on a year-long loan from Harbor View. And then Jason Johnson, we mentioned, of course, from Happy News, Jamaica. But he's been in America a little bit longer, went to VCU for college, spent last year with San Antonio FC, a team that is towards just one of the best in the USL this season, just having a, a brilliant year now in second place in the West. Substitution here for Substitution Phoenix. For Looks like actually two. As Edgar Areola will check in, along with AJ Gray. Leading the match is number 13, Edgar Areola. Leading the match is number six, Miguel Tim. Substitution for Phoenix Rising FC. Entering the match is number 24, AJ Gray. Leaving the match is number nine, Omar Bravo. So Omar Bravo exits here in exchange for AJ Gray. Spent last year with Orange County, the team that Phoenix drew a week ago. So that's it for Bravo. Still at one goal, four assists, or excuse me, one goal, two assists on the year. So the all-time leading scorer in Guadalajara history, his night is done. And that is it for substitutions for Phoenix Rising and Coach Carter on. I'm a little surprised that Bravo was taken out of the game, moving him back into a more of a midfield role with the presence of Johnson up top, dribbling and juggling the ball to himself there. <laughs> and Bravo did a pretty good job. Drew pass a little too much that time for A.J. Gray. So it seems like we'll see A.J. Gray in a right wing position and then Johnson Moore is a left wing now with Drogba up top as the striker. So it'll be 
interesting to see how that plays out. A.J. Gray, native of Ontario. Entering the 80th minute of action, so a little more than 10 minutes to play, of course, with the hydration break, with the time that Kwati spent being attended to by the medical professionals. There will be a handful of minutes in stoppage time. Johnson forward, the shot from Avila way off the mark. In fact, it could be recovered, and it is by A.J. Gray. Here's a cross in the air. On the other side, Avila, he can try again. Loses possession, but just back to Matt Watson. Watson with some space, taken down in the box, but he had already lost the ball, assumes the referee. who does not call a penalty there. And there certainly was some contact, but the question was, did he lose possession anyway? And it, it seemed like that was the case. Yeah, I think you'd already been dispatched, um, dispossessed there. And I mean, certainly was going to some contact from Bert. I mean, maybe you could argue that it was obstruction a little bit, but certainly, I, again, I think uh, I side with the referee on this occasion. Uh, he made the right decision on making no call as far as a foul was concerned. So Eddie Pru exits the game. The Bozeman, Montana native who spent the last three years playing in Sweden leaves and Luke Vercoloni will enter from Massachusetts. Went to Seton Hall and two seasons ago in 2015, member of the all USL squad. 81st minute. Now on the right flank, it's a foot race. Won by the switchbacks, but ultimately, the battle was won by the switchbacks. The war was won by Phoenix, who will win this throw-in. Good job there from Vasquez. Use the body to force the mistake from the switchbacks. Colony wasn't able to control the ball, puts it out of bounds for the throw-in, but now he's in possession, trying to find a teammate. Great job there from Watson on the track back from the midfielder to head the ball forwards. And Vasquez a little bit hit and hope on the ball forwards. Phoenix Rising have gotten away from that in the second half and consequently have been a lot more successful as this game has progressed. And this front three of the switchbacks are very, very difficult to control and con contain. Josh Cohen there, a fine save in these difficult, wet conditions. The rain still falling. A shot from Freda. Can we see a late winner? Johnson is looking for it. A cross in, but nobody there on the right flank. You'd think that would be A.J. Gray, but he was just behind. Oh, what it is with the Phoenix Rising, every cross they've done from this near sideline, it seems like they, they've overhit tonight. 83rd minute. Johnson again here on the left wing. Teammate in an offside position, now plays it. Ariola Rolls slowly out of bounds. We'll see a goal kick coming up here for Poiti. As good as Phoenix Rising have been of getting the ball out wide, particularly on this left flank, the subsequent crosses have been a bit of a disappointment, frankly. So Ariola, who's now in the match, the final substitution for Phoenix. He's a holding midfielder, even considered a defender. Southern California native from LA, went to UCLA. Here's Johnson, still has it. The shot is deflected by Josh Phillips. Fantastic job there, McFarlane and Phillips, the center backs for the switchbacks. McFarlane went in for the challenge. He goes to ground, doesn't end up with the ball at his feet. He's being helped up by the center ref now. And Phillips came back in cover. And as Johnson tried to take the shot, Phillips was able to deflect the ball out wide for the corner kick. So McFarlane from Kingston, Jamaica, like his teammate Kevon Freider. But McFarlane did go to college here in the U.S., FIU. 
He also came to America earlier. The header goes in! Johnson yet again puts Phoenix Rising on top with just minutes remaining in this contest. Phoenix has battled its way back behind Jason Johnson from Happy News, Jamaica. And the Banditos are loving it. Coach, 84th Coach, minute goal. Coach Cotteron was not happy with his team at halftime. He made one change <laughs> to begin the second half. And oh boy, what a change. Jason Johnson scores the first with want to. Second goal he scores, just beautiful positioning. A textbook header. The run there by Avila distracted the defenders. And there was Johnson to rise highest in the box, down with the header. Goalkeeper stands no chance. And the sliding celebration to find his teammate Drogba, who served in the ball off the corner kick for the assist. So we talked in pregame, and everyone's been talking about Didier Drogba and how he's the guy. He's scoring every single match. He's, he's the player that you have to watch out for. And ultimately, it's been Jason Johnson who's entered the match here in the second half. And also, we were talking in that first half about Drogba setting up other teammates. In both of those cases, it wasn't Drogba involved in the play at all. It was just Johnson being aggressive. It certainly was, and, and credit to the young man. He's made the most of his opportunity in this second half. And as I say, I, I've seen Phoenix Rising play three or four times this season. And he's come off the bench each time, and he's made a dif difference each time. So my question is, Coach, what does he have to do to get in the starting lineup? You know, he certainly, at the moment, is a super sub. As we see uh, Taesong Kim taken out. Colorado Springs final substitution. Pascal Abusi is in the 19-year-old from Cameroon. Shares a homeland with Poiti and Net. So 87th minute of action here in the desert with Matt Stubbington. I'm Corey Cohen on play-by-play. -play. Phoenix looking again. Poiti is there. And so, maybe just a little more than five minutes remaining. Colorado Springs, which after they scored in the 12th minute, pretty much dominated the, the first half. Is there a way that they can come back here, the way they've been playing? Well, they certainly can come back. I mean, they've got so much talent up front, especially with Catcher and, and Freighter, uh, and now Malcolm as well. They certainly have the ability and the, the skill up top to come back. They have to find those players and find them to feet, which they haven't really done. But again, you've got to give credit to the back line of this Phoenix Rising team. Peter Ramage and Amadou Dia have played much better in this second half, as the whole team has. And it's pretty interesting to see the inverse. In, in the first half, you and I were talking about how Phoenix had some of these top players up front and Bravo and Drogba, no one could feed them the ball. And here, now with Colorado Springs, they've got Freighter and Cashier and Malcolm, and no one's really been able to feed them the ball. So Coach Trichu hoping that now with Ibusi in the match and Vercoloni that one of those two can get something to happen with the forwards. Tonight's Reese's Dental Smile of the game belongs to Hisea in Phoenix. Hisea from Phoenix. Hisea will get to take home a Didier Drogba head cut out as part of his prize. You could win the Smile of the game too. Just look for staff members with the large player head cutouts at the next Phoenix Rising FC home match. Reese's Dental, their focus is providing quality and affordable dental care and braces for you and your family. To schedule an appointment, head to RISASDental.com. How do you like to have a giant drug head in your home? I'm not sure my wife would like a giant <laughs> drug <drop> head in my home. The kids might like it, but... <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Banditos, the Red Fury, they're certainly happy to have Drogba in their club. A lot of contact that time, and certainly a foul. Because that was just a battle for position, and uh, Ibusi did not have it. <laughs> And is, uh, I'm going to make a statement. I'm only in the game for the last five minutes. Drop a lovely little drag back turn there, slowing things down, and then 
Wiley was the old veteran, knew the contact was coming and rode the challenge well. Yeah, Drogba knows uh, he's clearly trying to, to burn a little time here as we're about to enter the 90th minute. And uh, Boosie was having none of that. So touch from Drogba and again, Veteran, everything he's accomplished, winning a Champions League pretty much single-handedly, he's pretty much getting triple teamed. <laughs> I mean, the man knows what he's doing. Well, takes about three guys. It takes three guys to stop him. He was able to put that one out. Bad foul there from Watson. Never got position. Takes McFarlane out, who seems to be in a lot of discomfort after that challenge, and Watson gets a yellow card for his trouble. So the yellow on Watson, as you said, certainly. Well, it seemed like a lot of pain. Now he seems all right. Maybe it's the adrenaline that's running through his body that fixed him immediately. So seven minutes of stoppage time here, which is not surprising when you consider the hydration break, along with Poiti being on the ground for quite a while. Eight minutes, excuse me. Minimum of eight minutes. So certainly a whole lot of this match left to be played. We've got some bonus soccer for you folks, whether you're watching from Colorado Springs in uh, Mountain Time or uh, Phoenix says, here's Johnson looking for the hat trick, gives it up. Blown opportunity. What could have been a hat trick for Johnson, he passes to Ariola, who just skies it. You're sitting on a hat trick, pull the trigger. Why, oh, why did he pass the ball? He had the defense frozen. He you, broke through the defense so clearly. Oh, it was a beautiful effort down this near sideline. Vasquez with the Cruyff turn to spring himself open. Right there. Oh, give credit to Phillips. Maybe the presence of Phillips changed Johnson's mind, but you're in the box, have a go, you're on a hat trick. And there was contact, so it's a corner kick. Johnson seems to be everywhere. Doesn't score that time, but again, could have scored a moment ago. And uh, certainly, if he scores three goals and a half, you have to talk about him for USL Player of the Week. Even now, with what he's been able to accomplish, uh, you'd have to look around the league and, and at least consider it. But three goals and a half, that would just be incredible, otherworldly. Uh, he's really done and answered the questions asked of him by his head coach as he was put in for this second 45 minutes of this match. So Dia getting up off the ground. Now in the 93rd minute. Again, bonus soccer. For wherever you may be watching, if you're watching online in the, as that was an offside call, if you're watching online, and you're in uh, Eastern time zone, little past 1 a.m. Some late night soccer for you. Well, Phoenix rising, they have to make sure they concentrate now. The 90 minutes is up. They want to hear that final whistle, but they have to make sure they focus and concentrate as time winds down. So a yellow card now for Johnson. So he's done it all, including picking up a yellow card. Now here in the 93rd minute. I think he got the card for uh, time waste in there, putting the ball forwards and the switchbacks were trying to take the free kick after the uh, offside call. So some more time being killed here by Phoenix Rising. Ariola throws in, or excuse me, Vasquez. Back to Matt Watson, and here's Drogba. Again, it'll take about three players to dispossess him, but he gives it away cleanly. Here's Malcolm. He's got plenty of speed when he gets some room. Ball just past the touch line. No, actually a foul away from the play on Didier Drogba. So we'll see the set piece taken by Moise Poiti. 
Young keeper, he has done a nice job tonight. Just couldn't get a good handle on that first goal. And the second one, Johnson came out of nowhere. Uh, certainly no chance for the goalkeeper on the second effort from Johnson. Nice defense that time from Cody Wakasa. Graduate of Cal Poly. 95th minute now. Again, still plenty of time for Colorado Springs to equalize. They've got possession in the box. Given away, though, Wakasa gets it to his teammate. Johnson looking to somehow come away with it. He cannot. Argetta plays it back. So here's Abusi. Header one by Phoenix. You know, the whistles from the crowd, they want the referee to blow his blow for full time. They're going to be uh, adding their own whistles for a long time yet. Yeah, it's not often you see a minimum of eight minutes of stoppage time, but certainly the hydration breaks mixed with uh, what seemed to be a pretty serious injury to Poiti, and it'll get you there. Fr uh, Freighter slips on the pitch. So the rain certainly taking effect out here in the desert. We've been talking about the heat all night, how it's about, now it's dipped to about 92, 93 degrees, but, you know, cool ball me 92. But certainly the rain, it slowed down now, but for much of this second half, it has been coming down pretty hard. Well, the rain can be a difference maker, but both these teams have played with a lot of skill and technical ability in this second half even with the conditions so credit to all of these talented players for being able to do that but we have seen quite a few of them lose their fit footing as this rain has deluged the area so now about to enter the 97th minute Cohen's going to get himself a yellow card if he keeps moving the ball around yeah, talking to by the official. And there it is. Right on, Matt. As a yellow card is issued to Josh Cohen. And uh, for Cohen, he figures, I'll take it. Keepers don't tend to get yellows that often anyway, so no real risk of the accumulation. No, it's just, a, it's it's silly. Uh, and, you know, I, as a coach, it'll drive you nuts because he's... The referee is only going to add time on anyway, so right. you've lost the benefit of anything that you may have wasted. Here's the pass to Freighter. Shot deflected by Dia. Now on the left side of the box. Some space created. Played back. Colorado Springs will try again. Malcolm with the header off the mark. It's still loose. Skied. And so Drogba will try to kill some time here. He's got Johnson right now in an offside position. Can he find him on? Just underneath his legs, a foul called against the switchbacks and a yellow as Drogba is on the ground. You see what Drogba was trying to do. He's trying to pick his moment to pass the ball into Johnson. Johnson was on side, holding his position, anticipating the ball played into space down this near sideline. He tried to hold on, held on to the ball, and that gave the switchbacks time to come back defensively. And it was Phillips that actually took Drogba to the turf. So Phillips, the Gonzaga graduate, picks up a yellow in the 98th minute. It's his third season with Colorado Springs. He was actually invited to the New England uh, Revolution's preseason camp. Promising young player at 25. So here's a boot from Poiti. Figure maybe about a minute to go. You're going to start hearing some chants from the Banditos, the Red Fury, to end this match, but certainly with some of the time wasting. There's a shot. Cohen is there. It was a little bit tricky. Ended up being just wide of the net. And he's certainly going to try to kill some time here. It was a rather ungainly the way he went after that ball. His footwork looked a little bit questionable, but... Credit to him, he managed to get his body behind the ball and again, no mistakes made. And that does it, a two to one victory for Phoenix Rising FC. They get the three points for the first time in history. This club has defeated Colorado Springs switchbacks 
FC. They were 0 for 5 all time. And because of that man, Jason Johnson, they now get their first ever victory against the Switchbacks. And now their first win since back, excuse me, after four draws in a row. They now get their first win since June 10th. I wonder who's going to be polishing his boots tonight. He certainly, <laughs> earned, certainly earned his supper this evening. Great job from Johnson. Certainly he's been able to thrive as this super sub role since Didier Drogba has joined the squad. And for head coach Patrice Carteron and everything they've gone through, four straight draws. They finally got the three points they were after. They haven't gotten since they faced Whitecaps FC2 on June 10th. They got him tonight. Didier Drogba, quiet for his standards at least. He was more active in the first half. In the second half, it really just was the Jason Johnson show. But overall, Drogba, as you see him there embracing Josh Cohen, still has invigorated this squad. And uh, they earn the 2-1 to win. Right now, we're going to send it down to the pitch to Jose, who's on the field with Jason Johnson. All right, we're here with tonight's Matt of the Match. One goal, one assist. Uh, how you feeling? Uh, definitely great, you know. After being on the road so long, get, get some positive results on the road and um, to come back home in front of these beautiful fans and to get a win, especially um, the way we did it, it's really big for the players, the coaching staff, and also the fans. And Coach Carteron didn't mince words. He said for the first half, he was put to sleep by the team's play. What did yeah. he tell you guys in the second half to get you guys coming out so strong? Uh, he was most of the coach, but it was also the player. That's that's one thing about this this team. It's the moral of the, the players um, during halftime. Everybody got each other's back. Even players on the bench, they're ready to go on and um, give their best, just like um, the three subs did tonight. Yeah. Now after that string of draws, how does the win feel? Oh, beautiful. We celebrate a little with the crowd, and then tomorrow, back to the next one. All right, get with the crowd. Go on, then. Thank you very much, Jason. That's Jason Johnson with a goal and assist and a 2-1 win for Phoenix Rising. Back to you guys. You hear them playing Phoenix by Fallout Boy, one of the co-owners of this club, Pete Wentz, the lyricist for Fallout Boy. Seems pretty fitting for Phoenix Rising FC as they get the win, their first since June 10th, as they look to climb the standings. They've been a few matches behind. They've only played 14 entering tonight. They now head to 22 points, puts them into playoff position at the moment. We'll take a break, come back with some post game right after this. Don't go anywhere. Trolls. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> This is Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. La familia Heineken ha dejado un legado especial, una receta original con solo tres ingredientes y todos naturales. Yo también tengo un don especial. La habilidad de llorar cuando se necesite. Bonita. ¿eh? Tres ingredientes naturales. There's more behind the star. Phoenix Rising Football Club ha mostrado puntería. Con los legendarios Didier Drogba y Omar Bravo compartiendo la cancha, los partidos de Phoenix Rising son eventos que no se pueden perder. Obtén tus boletos ya y ayuda a Phoenix Rising Football Club contra San Antonio Football Club, sábado 29 de julio. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Cada tiro se escucha alrededor del mundo. Didier Drogba having the time of his life, getting his second win as a member of Phoenix Rising FC. And he wasn't the personal hero tonight like he was a week ago in the draw. But ultimately, a player like Drogba, everything he's been able to accomplish, winning a Champions League, he knows it's not about himself, it's about the club. Now taking a video off one of the fans' cameras. You gotta love Didier Drogba. Well, the fans' uh, highlight tonight was be that video that Drogba's taking, but these are the highlights of the match. 
Lovely layoff there from Drogba. Gavin shot just wide and high of the net, but this was the first goal of the game. There's Freda winning the ball in the air, and then lovely patience there with the right-footed shot to beat Cohen in net for Phoenix Rising. And Freda number 11, the forward for the switchbacks, did a tremendous job of finishing that effort. Yeah, brilliant work tonight from Kevon Freder, specifically in the first half. Second half, he was frustrated, couldn't quite get the ball when and where he wanted to, but one heck of a player that Colorado Springs has. He was a tremendous player, and lovely save there from Cohen. Off of the right-footed shot from Burt, getting into the attack it was the right fullback. Again, good goalkeeping from Josh Cohen. Some changes made by Coach Cotteran at halftime, bringing Johnson onto the match, bringing Bravo back into the midfield. Gave some more presence for the Phoenix Rising team in the midfield area of the park, and that created more opportunities further up the pitch. And this was the tying goal. Goalkeeper Poite didn't get a clean handle on the ball as it came in and then deflected off of the knee of Johnson and he puts it in the back of the net. Looks around to make sure that the referee isn't going to make a call on the foul. There was no call, there was no foul, the ball's in the back of the net. The match is tied 1 1. A heck of a celebration there from Jason Johnson, just the beginning of his excellent performance coming off the bench. He won the corner kick that led to the second goal for Phoenix Rising. Didier Drogba on the assist with the cross. And leaping like a salmon was Johnson. <laughs> Heads the ball down onto the goal line. The goalkeeper had no chance. And that was the go-ahead goal. And that was what the Phoenix Rising team needed to get all three points tonight. It was just the two from Mr. Johnson. So we'll take a look one final time at the stats, the possession. Now it, uh, it's still uh, lopsided for Phoenix. We were talking the first half didn't really matter. Second half, they used it a bit more to their advantage, and you can see shots where they really started to step it up. Well, the possession in the second half started to come in Phoenix Rising's attacking half, and that was the difference in the, in the second 45 minutes was where that position, possession happened. It was further up the pitch, and consequently, Partly because of that man right there. <laughs> they come out victorious this evening. Well, there are two teams right now after this match tied for the final spot in the playoff position at the moment, tied for eighth place. Phoenix and Tulsa, and they're playing each other next week at Tulsa Roughnecks FC. Make sure you watch that one. It should be incredibly entertaining. For Colorado Springs, they'll take on OKC. Right now, Colorado Springs still in sixth place on the table. Tulsa in eighth. One final time for our whole crew here, Sharni, Yurk, and Tom Piero. For my partner, Matt Stubbington, I'm Corey Cohen, signing off from the desert. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written consent from the United Soccer League.